Hi students, um, let me show you the 4 to 1 multiplexer now. So it still has this kind of sideways trapezoidal shape. And um, we're going to have four data inputs coming in over here on the left. So these are the data inputs. And then down here usually we have our select lines. And these are also inputs, but um, these are going to determine which one of the data inputs gets selected and piped to the output. And for the 4 to 1 multiplexer, we actually have two as opposed to the 2 to 1 multiplexer, we only had one. So um, these guys are our select inputs. <clears throat> so we can label these. We can call this select sub 0, select 1, and then we can call these, say, A, B, C, D. Okay, so here's how it works. Depending on what comes into these select lines is going to determine which one of these input lines gets basically grabbed and piped to the output. So um, that means that if we select one of these and pipe it to the output, it doesn't matter what's coming in on any of these other inputs. So that means on our truth table we're going to have quite a few don't cares. So um, let's actually look at the different cases for this. So if we have our inputs coming in here, A, B, C, D, and then suppose on our select lines we had the first case, case which is 0, 0. Well, 0, 0 means we're going to select the first input and we're going to pipe it to the output. So A is the one that gets selected. Um, we can put this into our truth table. A, B, C, D. I'm going to do kind of an abbreviated truth table because, um, like I said, there's going to be a lot of don't cares. And we're going to just be concerned when our output is high, so when our output is a 1. So here we have that S is, S1 is 0 and S0 is 0. And we're going to select what's on A. So that means what's on B, C, and D, we don't care. It doesn't matter. It's not going to be outputted at all. I'll label this here. Okay, so if we have a 0 coming in on A, then 0 will be piped to the output. If we have a 1 coming in on A, then we'll have a 1 on our output. Okay, great. So then the next case is when we have 0, 1 coming in on the select lines. So here, this is going to select our B input. So if we have a 0, 1 coming in, B is the input that gets selected and piped directly to the output. So that means that we no longer care what's coming in on A, we only care what's coming in on B, we don't care about C, and we don't care about D. So um, to make our function here, remember when we were making um, functions from truth tables, we care about where the output is equal to 1. So we can just kind of basically skip the case when b is equal to 0. So we're going to have a 1 when b is equal to 1. Okay, great. So then the next case we have is we have inputs a, b, c, d, and then this time, let's say coming in our select lines, we have 1, 0. So that's this case right here, 1, 0. So this is going to select the c input and pipe that to the output. So we don't care what's on D, we don't care what's coming in on B, and we don't care what's coming in on A. And if C has a 1 coming in, then we have a 1 going out. And then finally, the last case is when we have a 1, 1 coming in on the select lines. At this point, this is where we pick our last data input, the D, and we pipe D to out. So here on our truth table, when S0, S1 is 1, 1, we don't care what's on A, we don't care what comes in on B or C, but if D is a 1, then our output will be a 1. So this is what I mean by kind of the, um, we'll call this an abbreviated truth table. And the reason why we can do this is because we're skipping the cases when output is equal to 0. So we're only concerned, when, uh, concerned with when is the output high. Okay, great. So um, this we can, we can write the function for the 4 to 1 multiplexer. Um, it's going to look like this. 
So our output is going to be a function of um, our inputs are S1, S0. If they're both equal to 0, so for this first row of our abbreviated truth table, then I'm going to put a not and a not on both the S1 and the S0, and then I'm going to and that with A. Okay, so this is going to give me this first case right here. S0, um, S1 not, S0 not, not, anded with A is going to give me my first product term. Okay, so this is going to be in um, sum of products form. The next row is given by, here's my inputs, S1, S0. Now I'm going to select B if S1 is complemented and S0 is not. Okay, great. Then the third row, this one right here, this is going to be given by, here's my select line inputs. I'm going to select C this time as long as this is a 1 and this is a 0. So I put a complement there to indicate that that needs to be 0 in order for this product term to be 1. Then finally, S1, S0, I'm going to select D if both of these are true, so I don't need any complements on this. Okay. So this is in my um, sum of products form. That means I can draw the circuit for a multiplexer. So even though the schematic symbol for the multiplexer looks like a sort of sideways trapezoid, the actual um, circuitry can be implemented with ands, ors, and nots. So when we have circuits like this that have kind of um, multiple product terms that are all being ORed together, um, I like to make it kind of in, I like to put my inputs in this horizontal and vertical orientation, like so. So I'm going to call this A, B, C, D. This will be my S1 input and my S0 input. So these are the select lines. These are the data lines. So this is what's actually going to be outputted depending on what's coming in on these. So my first product term was S, S1 not, S0 not, not, anded with A. So I can take um, an A and I'm going to grab an S1. I'm going to complement it with that little bubble. I'm going to take an S0 and I'm going to complement it and I'm going to and all these together and there's my first product term um, implemented with a three input AND gate. My next product term is I'm going to grab a B and then I'm going to grab an S1 complement it and I'm going to grab an S0 and then I'm not going to complement it. There we go. And I'm going to AND all those together and this thing gives me my second product term. The third is similarly, I grab a C, I grab an S1, I grab an S0. The one I'm going to complement is the S0 and then AND all these together. Finally, I grab a D for my last product term, an S1, an S0. Nothing gets complemented here, so I have my final AND gate. And now these represent all of my product terms. First one's this, the second one's this, the third's this, and the fourth is this with all these AND gates. So all these are getting ORed together. That means I can take the output of all of these ANDs and put them into a four input OR gate, and this is going to give me my OUT. So this circuit array here um, implements a four to one multiplexer. So let me know if you have questions. In the next video, I'll show you the eight to one multiplexer.